Over the centuries, the people of York have faced all sorts of challenges. Invasions, war, floods have all been met and overcome. In the current climate, the city and its people are facing a new and pressing problem. Having to do more with less. We have a real challenge if we're going to take out 28% of the um, funding of the council. One of the positives, if there are any, from cuts in services is that it is making us reassess what is local government for, what is it going to do and how can it do it. The old way would be to try and solve it by committee. <sighs> We have to make a step change and that step change is fundamentally to find new ways of doing and delivering and securing best possible quality of life here. The solution, open innovation. We have a huge amount of talent in this city, a huge amount of talent in this organisation. This is about unlocking that talent, bringing the ideas together, bringing the people together. Nesta's Creative Council initiative encouraged us to tap into York's greatest asset, the genius of its people. To do that, we developed an easily accessible website, Genius York, for everybody to contribute their ideas. What we needed to do was find um, a tool that everyone or most stakeholders could engage with, so it's a very popular sort of media to use at the minute, the web. Most people have access to that. Genius York is open to everyone wishing to generate and develop ideas around making York a better place. It makes it easier to do things faster, to do things smarter, um, to do things better and also to do things for a bit less money. We're not solving one-off problems here or looking at incremental ways to improve things. We're actually trying to use disruptive methods to really transform the way we approach problem solving in York. Give a man a cake and feed him for a day but feed his imagination and anything is possible. Our journey. It's not about solving just one problem. Kirsten England approached Science City York's innovation team to help the council pull together a bid to create open innovation in the city as part of the Nesta Creative Council's programme. We took our idea to Birmingham to the Creative Council's camp and pitched our idea around open innovation and although they were very enthusiastic about that idea, they felt as if we needed something more tangible to measure as part of our project. And they're like, yep, that's great, we love the process, but what are you actually going to do with it? We went back to the City of York Council and asked them what they felt would be four areas or four challenges that we could work with as part of our Genius project and came up on the back of that with four proposals. They addressed asset management, social care, working better with small business and sustainable green living. And these are just the first four challenges and questions. If we get to phase two of this, we want to be doing this with all of the questions and problems. We want the community and the council to be coming up with the questions and developing it using this process. And we want this to be a culture change in the council as a long-term challenge. We realised very much that we needed more capacity in our team and we asked for a project manager from the council. We picked the innovation team in the council based on their competencies, not based on where in the hierarchy they sit. So it's about the skills and the excitement and the uh, passion that people have for a subject or for a problem. The platform. Why we chose an online forum. What we needed from our web platform was something relatively cheap to set up but also quick and easy so we could get the ball rolling by the 25th of January. So with advice from John Craig, our Nesta Point person, we arrived at the Ning platform. We get an instant response. People uh, are very willing to interact. The site had a social networking element to it which allowed people then to respond in whatever way they wanted and the discussion was basically um, driven by the responses of the people so we, we set the context for everyone but then this platform allowed people to take it where they wanted to go as opposed to us doing that. Just before we launched our platform we needed to generate a bit of media interest in our project and so through um, a bit of innovation ourselves we actually managed to get Kirsten England, our CEO, in a bathtub in the centre of York. So rub-a-dub-dub, -dub, CEO in the tub. 
Theory is one thing, but we needed to put our ideas to the test. Challenge 1 allowed us to put our process into practice. We picked a particular building as part of the challenge, Clem and Thorpe Maltings. A lot of the assets we have historically have been constrained by the service use of a particular asset. As part of the challenge, we felt we could open some of that, that up. We could look at different ways of using assets. A few of the contributors to the site were just kind of saying, just give us, give us the building or give us a space within the building. We assessed the different spaces in the building and quickly came to the conclusion that some of them just weren't suitable. What we really hit upon though was the knowledge about the assets. We realised that we, we, we know about assets, we know about how we use them, when we can use them. When it came to the alternative usage perspective, we just found the information was short. So in terms of the positive, it really kind of reinforced that we needed different and extra information in a central asset information repository. We soon realised that collecting and analysing data is crucial to future asset management in the city. What began as a simple discussion on one building developed into a proposal for a sophisticated data mapping and tagging system that could make every council asset more productive. There are means to provide, and we call it a mesh, there are means to provide a, a description that is shared between organisations. It's indexing, it's cataloguing, saying where does asset information get stored, where do community groups information get stored, where do dialogues occur about assets and resources and ways to improve the city. Now Genius is one, and I'm hoping this is a catalyst, but where are the others? Challenge two using new technology to aid the old and vulnerable in their homes. I'll never forget the day we lost her now. Well, living on your own, you're not living, you're existing. You know, you just carry on day to day. Many local authorities have issues with the elderly and vulnerable in their homes. We're very lucky here in York that we have many technology savvy companies and Challenge 2 brought the companies together to provide solutions for people living in their own homes. Some of those solutions involve computerised homes, uh, community TV systems and Skype via remote control. Challenge 3 on the other hand was completely different and that was around procurement. Challenge 3. Making it easier to work with small business. A live example of how we've changed our approach has been um, a service we went out to procure a few years ago. This was the original tender documentation. There's a lot of it, heavy folder. Uh, we're out to procure uh, the same service again now, um, and this is the revised documentation. It's probably about 20 pages long, so that speaks for itself, really. The big shift in thinking is where we're approaching the markets and asking them how they might deliver a service for us rather than us being prescriptive. Old, new. Challenge 4. Using traffic and footfall to generate income and live greener. Challenge 4 was by far our liveliest and most popular challenge on the platform. This challenge addressed sustainability of footfall and transport in the city. And again the process was completely different to the other three challenges whereby we had a workshop where people pitched their ideas to the rest of the group. They then voted at the end of the workshop for their favourite three and then this was further enhanced by a voting system on the platform open to the member, members of the general public. It's just so nice to, to hear lots of very different people from different backgrounds coming up with ideas that really fit what we were trying to get at. The business case. Why it all makes sense. The business case in support of the Genius York project is the fact that in addition to saving the City of York Council money in the future, it also allows them to be much more responsive, more dynamic, more technically savvy and much more proactive in dealing with future challenges for the City. We will be able through uh, this process to demonstrate that we can reduce cost, but that isn't the, the, the main driver for us in doing this. Uh, we're interested in improving services to customers uh, we're in, and you know, we are very, very keen that we get that engagement. We work with people more 
and there is that sense in our city of all the organisations working together for, for the good of York. The Eureka initiative was the internal council suggestion box and over the last three years they had actually received over 200 ideas and suggestions for improvements in the council. Unfortunately only around five of those ideas were actually implemented and those ideas took a very long time to be implemented. In contrast to that, the Genius York platform, after 10 weeks of being open, has actually received over 3,000 views, over 200 ideas, and we are actually intending to implement nine pilot studies on the back of that. Lessons learned. Recognising, adapting and improving. A few of the lessons we've learned along the way are we definitely look to develop the platform that we currently use so that we can structure the information slightly better and and help generate further discussions on there. We we'll also look at ways beyond the web platform that we can get, engage with the public, so perhaps one-on-one -on -one discussions and workshops within each challenge. There's also a definite move to find more creative ways of marketing the project and communicating with the wider public. The main lessons learned for us in phase one of this initiative is the fact that the general public and the businesses are really keen to work with the council to solve the city's problems. And that enthusiasm and keenness was a great surprise to the council. It's a really good conversation space for people to have dialogue and to refine ideas. There are a few things like a vo voting mechanism that we would like to develop in the future. Feedback. What do others think? Open discussions with other councils have allowed us to gain insights into their approach and get a feel for what they think of ours. I mean, I think the Wigan would be interested in, you know, a, this kind of method. I think bringing innovation into a range of sort of key public area, you know, public policy problems is fine, isn't it? But I, I, for me, what interests me in the, in the York approach, I suppose, is is the ethos. Um, I think there was something that I've learned as well from looking about at it and talking with your uh, chief exec. I learned something about the ethos, about the fact that it is rooted in a community development approach um, that's authentic, that understands where people are coming from, that trusts them, that engages with them. So it does connect. You know, at one at the other level, you know, it is. It's a knowledge base. It's university. It's high flying. You know, it's got those those other kind of attributes. Um, but I think it works at a more human level with people. And I think that e the ethos, I think, is what people would engage with. We've actually been quite innovative in the way we've received our feedback as well from other councils and, and beyond. We've used social networks, we've used blog sites, we've done phone calls, we've emailed, we've had face-to-face -face conversations. We've begun a journey which we will continue on and we've created um, investment in this year's budget to support innovation in design and delivery of services. So the journey goes on, we just very much like to be involved on a collaborative basis with the others in this process. Genius York is a process, not solving a one-off problem. And because of this, we very much feel this can be applied to any city in the world. And we'd be delighted to share our best practice with you to help you solve your problems. Greg and the story.